Good morning, everyone. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Well, we have three Sundays that are tied together. Last Sunday, this Sunday, and then next Sunday. And they're really talking about our vocation in life because we're talking about the vocation of Jesus and we have two examples of what not to do. Last Sunday it was the rich man. He didn't, he failed, hmm? walked away. This Sunday two others, James and John, they failed the course too. Next Sunday is the one who succeeds. Stay tuned. We remember once again the mercy and the forgiveness of our God. So whatever has happened in our lives in the last week, the last hour, the last all our lifetime, we allow God to embrace and to bring us mercy and forgiveness. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came among us to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You intercede for us now at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins. Bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, grant that we may always conform our will to yours and serve you in sincerity of heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen.
A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. It was the will of the Lord to crush him with pain. When you make his life an offering for sin, he shall see his offspring and shall prolong his days. Through him the will of the Lord shall prosper. Out of his anguish he shall see light. He shall find satisfaction through his knowledge. The righteous one, my servant, shall make many righteousness, and he shall be bear their iniquities. The word of the Lord. God. Responsorial Psalm. Let your love be upon us, Lord, even as we hope in you. Let your love be upon us, O Lord, even as we hope in you. The word of the Lord is upright, and all his work is done in faithfulness. He loves righteousness and justice. The earth is full of the steadfast love of the Lord. Let your love be upon us, Lord, even as we hope in you. Truly the eye of the Lord is on those who fear him, on those who hope in his steadfast love, to deliver their soul from death and to keep them alive in famine. Let your love be upon us, Lord, even as we hope in you. Our soul waits for the Lord. He is our help and shield. Let your steadfast love, O Lord, be upon us, even as we hope in you. Let your love be upon us, Lord, even as we hope in you. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. The Son came to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came forward to Jesus and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever you, we ask of you. Jesus said to them, What is it you want me to do for you? And they said to him, Grant us to sit one at your right hand and one at your left in your glory. But Jesus said to them, You do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink and be baptized with the baptism with which I will be baptized? They replied, We are able. Jesus said to them, The cup that I drink you will drink. And with the baptism with which I am baptized, you will be baptized. But to sit at my right hand or at my left is not mine to grant, but it is for those for whom it has been prepared. When the ten heard this, they became angry with James and John. So Jesus called them together and said to them, You know that among the Gentiles, those whom they recognize as their rulers lorded over them. And their great ones are tyrants over them. But it is not to be so among you. 
Whoever wishes to become great among you must be your servant, and whoever wishes to be first among you must be slave of all. The Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, to give his life as a ransom for many. The Gospel of the Lord. What do you want me to do for you? As the question of Jesus to me, to you, to each one of us, what do you want me to do for you? And we recall that this is not a history book. This is rather what we believe is the Word of God speaking to us here and now in this place at this time. Jesus is dead serious. Jesus really wants to know. This is a very sincere question that Jesus is asking this morning. What do you want me to do for you? And because of the wider context, it's really asking us to look at our own vocation. Married life, single life, priesthood, celibate, young, old. Wherever we are in our life journey at this particular time, What is it that you want Jesus to do for you? What is it that you want to ask Jesus to do for you? You see, that's been the the theme of this whole section because Jesus is talking really about his own vocation, which is, as he has mentioned several times, and just before this, particular section here in Mark's Gospel, even though it wasn't, isn't read on a Sunday, Jesus once again says, look it, I may have a lot of popularity, I may have glory out there, I may be really praised because healing the sick and so on, but you know what? My real vocation is to head on to Jerusalem to be condemned, to suffer, and to die, and to rise again. And of course, They try to dissuade him. They try to get him off track of his vocation. Peter takes him aside and says, Oh, this can't can't happen to you. Get behind me, Satan, he says to him. And so it's really talking about our own vocation and what we can learn from Jesus and the way he fulfills his vocation and the pitfalls that are placed there for him. So... What about my vocation? What about your vocation? I mean, we could choose any of them, single, married, celibate, priesthood, whatever it is, but I guess you can apply it to your own, but for my own sake, I'm going, for the sake of a homily, I'm going to choose the one I know best, which is celibate priesthood. Um, Not only because I know it best, but because it's very much part of the church's plan right now and the role of the church and what Pope Francis is bringing toward us. And so the first pitfall for me and for all those in ministerial priesthood is this business of riches and of possessions and of not depending on them and not depending on boats and booze and travel and all their kinds of stuff, but to live a simple life, even if one doesn't have the vow of poverty, to have those things that are necessary, but not beyond that. And of course, the next thing, the temptation of today, James and John want to have the places at the right and on the left, the places of glory. That's the next temptation of the vocation of celibate priesthood. 
glory, clericalism, looking for places of honor, that which Pope Francis has condemned over and over again, clericalism. Oh, if you have, as in my family, uh, a lot of cancer, and so sometimes you're diagnosed with a certain uh, cancer in a certain place, but you know that that's not the primary cancer. And so you go looking for where is it that the primary cancer is. So that's what the church has done, what Francis has done. And so there is a cancer of um, child sexual abuse, for example, and, but Pope Francis would say that's not the primary. Primary thing is clericalism, and that's what causes cover-up and child sexual abuse. Um, it is, first of all, this clericalism that's the primary cancer. Pope Francis has said that we'll never deal with child sexual abuse until we've dealt with clericalism. And that is this whole tendency to be special among clergy, to have places of honor, to uh, fall into the pitfall of this gospel today of, of glory, wanting seats at the right hand and the left. And you can take that and apply it to your own vocation, whatever it is. What do you want me to do for you? Jesus is dead serious in your vocation, in mine. What do you want Jesus to do for you? What do you want me to do for you, Jesus is asking. But you to rise for prayer. And so we search within our own hearts and do what is it that we ask of God at this particular time, especially for our own vocations. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For the mission of the church to care for the poor and the powerless, particularly those who may have experienced harm while in the care of our church, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a greater awareness of the fragility of our common home, the earth, suffering as a result of human actions, we pray to the Lord. Lord For all Christians seeking the grace to follow Jesus, seeing earthly honors, and giving our lives in humble service to others, we pray to the Lord. For all those living with mental or emotional illnesses, their families and their caregivers, we pray to the Lord. For all caught in human trafficking, yearning to be freed, healed, and returned to their homes, we pray to the Lord. Lord For all health care workers, as they continue to dedicate themselves to caring for those ill with COVID and other illnesses, we pray to the Lord. For the sick and those who have died, and for those who treasure and care for them, we pray to the Lord. Lord Gracious God, merciful God, we turn to you once again in our own vocations as instruments of your work in our world. And we ask you to hear these, our prayers, through Christ our Lord. Amen. You may be seated as the offertory table is prepared for our celebration of Eucharist.
partakers of the divinity of Christ, humble themselves to share in our human life. And blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. And through your goodness we have this wine to offer you. Through the divine and work of human hands, we will become our spiritual virtue. Pray that our sacrifice may become acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. Grant us, Lord, we pray, a sincere respect for your gifts, that through the purifying action of your grace, we may be cleansed by the very mysteries we serve through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints we declare your glory, as with one voice we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of, blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Michael our Bishop, all the clergy, and all of God's people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. For it is through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. On our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. But on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. I invite you now to offer each other a sign of the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Those of us who are joining us remotely, I invite you to exchange a sign of peace with those you are with. And if you are alone, know that you are very much part of the community that we offer peace here at Our Lady of Fatima. Lamb of God, take away the sin of the Lord. Sisters and brothers in Christ, behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. May the blood of Christ keep me safe for eternal life.
Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, we pray that, benefiting from participation in heavenly things, we may be helped by what you give in this present age and prepared for the gifts that are eternal through Christ our Lord. I notice a uh, very nice colored flyer here. And so it's a takeout October 30th and the 31st. Assume that's a Saturday and a Sunday. Portuguese malasadas. <laughs> hey, how's that? That's good. That's good. Malasadas. I'll have to say it again. Now, the next is easy. In support of Our Lady of Fatima Paris, 58th Division Street. So you pre order before October 27, and you call um, Manuela Mello. And then numbers, I'm sure this is on the website as well, okay? And I picked them up at the new hall between 10.30 and 4.30. So that gives you lots of freedom, lots of space. So I wish you a good week in your vocation. And continue, I will, and you continue to ask, respond to Jesus when he says, What do you want me to do for you? The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in the peace of Christ. Thank you.